In this lesson, we're going to teach this mummy how to look in more than one direction. <laughs> we're going to learn how to flip our character based off of the direction he's actually moving in. So let's go and open up that character script we've been working on for the last few lessons here. All right, so we're going to be utilizing in this lesson this public bool forward variable. And look at this. By the end of here, we've used all three variables. Pretty cool. So um, let's go ahead and start punching this logic in here. So what do we want to do right now? We want to have our code understand which direction our player is moving. And uh, we're going to be using something called an if statement to utilize some logic here to make that happen. Now, if statements add a sense of logic through a simple true or false condition that you get to create yourself. Basically, we can just tell our code to analyze the situation and take an action in response to the condition. For example, an analogy in everyday life would be, if it's raining outside, grab your umbrella before you go walk out the door. If it's not raining, then just simply walk out the door, right? It's a simple decision that we make every day. So let's start out. I'm going to type out this if statement, and then I'm going to break it down for you. Let's go into our fixed update function as we're going to be calculating this logic based off of our physical um, direction that our character is moving in, right? So let's put a comment here and let's just say, uh, let's go direction switch functions. Let's go wrap tuck common sense. Common sense. All right. So let's go ahead and type out this if statement here and we'll break it down as we go here. So if what is our logic here? If we are moving in the right um, direction, positive x-axis, and our Boolean variable is set to false, that he's not facing forward, then we want to flip him around and set that facing forward to true, right? To make the logic all match up and make him flip around. So let's go like this. If move direction variable is, uh, is greater, then 0, 0.0 f and our forward variable is false. So these are kind of new things here. Every time you want to say and in your script, you want to shift seven. I don't know what this thing is called, but you want to put two of these symbols side by side. And anytime you want to say if something's false, rather than just typing in the variable, that would say and forward. And forward is calling our variable true. So we're going to say if it's false just by adding that exclamation mark in front of any variable we will invert it so there you go so if we're moving in the right direction and our variable is not set to facing forward then in your if statements you just open and close your curly brackets and put your statements in between there then I'm just gonna say a comment and say flip direction and then we'll go ahead and create a function for that uh, later on so that's great. That's going to take care of it when we are moving in that direction. So let's do it for the opposite direction. I'm just going to copy and paste. If move direction is less than zero, meaning we're moving in the left direction, and we are true facing forward, well, then he'd be moonwalking. So we want to flip the direction again, right? So what do we need to change here? Um, there's one thing we need to change because we have our main if statement. This is if, this is the main thing that we want to do. But if this is not true, we're just going to say if else. If this is not true, then let's do the opposite. Let's flip the direction back. So I'm going to say <clears throat> if not facing forward, then invert and flip around to face back. Okay, cool. And you guys can analyze and put your own comments that makes the most sense to you as well in your script. So now let's take a quick look at this if statement. So if always starts with a simple if. Then you have your brackets to contain your condition in here. So if we're moving in this direction and we're not facing forward, then put your curly brackets so you can stack statements in here and set what you want to do. If the script says, hmm, nothing's true, what do I do? It's going to just skip this, and then it's going to go down if else, if something else is happening, like this. Well, then let's do this statement. So it's basically just setting two decisions to make here for your computer to think about, which in this case is RapTuck. So now let's go ahead and make our first function to flip the direction here. And what I like to do for just my own way that I organize my scripts is I always go down to the very bottom, 
space out a couple times and add a comment. I'm just going to add some cool stars and just say custom functions so I know where I can find all this stuff in my script. I'm going to go down here. All right, I'm just going to place all my custom functions below here. So let's go ahead and get started on making our first function to flip our character around. And then we can go ahead and replace these comments because now I know what I want to do here. And we'll just replace that with the function to actually perform that action. So whenever I'm creating a function, I like to go down here and think about, now what does this function need to do? So first off, I'm just going to comment out. I'm going to say I want to invert my Boolean variable for um, facing direction. So this way, I'm going to say if this flip is performed, then invert my variable to make it so I'm not facing forward anymore. And if I'm facing backwards, if I ever flip my character, I want this to invert again so it'll be back set to true. So our logic will always be working. So that's the first thing I want to do in this function. And what else do I need to do? I need to actually rotate my character 180 degrees to flip him around. Just like that. So that's what I need this one function to do. All right, so let's give it a name here. So I want to name this function specifically direction switch. And I'm titling it based off of different, not camel casing like our variables. Because remember, we want to separate these, right? So functions, I'm going to start with a capital letter on each one. So direction switch. And then every function ends with curly brackets. I'm going to start this with void to detect that this is a function. And then I'm going to go down, open curly brackets, close curly brackets, because we need to say, what does this function actually do? What does it perform? That needs to be contained within these brackets. Now, within this series, um, we're going to be creating a ton of functions, but there's a couple things that you don't really need to know. Um, for this, it's a bit more advanced. Like, for example, why do we always start with void? Void, simply put, is just a way of stating what type of information to return from your function. We won't be needing that in this series as that's a bit more complex. So we'll just skip that for now. And then the brackets at the end, simply put, these here, they're just a way of putting what type of information we can pass off into a specific variable within this function. And again, we're not going to be doing that. So I just wanted to let you know there is a reason for these things, but we don't need to use them in this because that's a bit above what we need to do for this simple function here. Okay, so within our function, we have these comments that are not within it anymore because <laughs> I created the brackets around it. So let's move these up. I'm just going to cut and paste these guys back in here and let's start performing these here. So first thing, I want to invert my Boolean variable for facing direction. It's always standard to true when I start, but every time my character flips directions, it has to update to invert itself or else the logic just won't work. Super easy to invert a variable. So I'm just going to say our variable forward is now equal to not forward. Let's end it with a semicolon and done. That means that basically whatever our forward variable is, it's going to now be equal to the inverted state of that. Simple. We're going to see how that's working in a sec here. So now the next big step here is rotating our character actually. So it's pretty simple. Um, what we want to do is we want to access that transform component on this object. So lowercase, it's on this object that the script is applied to. I want to access the rotation. So I'm going to say rotate. I want to access the rotating parameters. And now because this is an object, look at this, a wrap tuck character, it has transform, rotation, x, y, and z. That means we have three um, axes that we need to, um, I'm going to say axes because I really don't know <laughs> if that's proper English or not, um, rotate, but I need a vector three to give some information to all of those. Because if I gave it a vector two at this point, it's not really compatible with the object that it's trying to receive it. So rotate, I'm going to say is equal to vector three. And which direction do I want to rotate this character in? There's an X and a Y and a Z axis. If I rotate him in the Y axis, which is straight up and down, he's just going to swing around like he's swinging around on a pole or something. So let's go vector three dot up. That's going to give us 
the y axis. And I'm going to comma to space over vector 3 axis, and it needs a float. So I want to uh, rotate him around the y axis 180.0f as a float. And now we need to tell it the space. See, now we have our vector 3 axis is up, which is y. And then now our float value for how much we want to rotate the angle, which is going to be 180. Now we need to tell it around what space and what is this relative to. So I'm going to say space. We want dot not self. Self could work, but I'm going to say world to be safest because the x, y, and z axis is in our world, in our main game window here is always going to be the same. But every object can have different axes. Um, the y value could be like over here if it's like a joint on a character or something. So it could just be offset. But um, y is always up in our world space, not relative to the object here. So I'm going to say world, and I'm going to close this off, and simply just add our end of statement semicolon. And there we go. So now, let's save this script. You can see I had some errors down here because I didn't close that off. But now when I select down here, um, I'm still having an error. So this is perfect. If you're ever trying to troubleshoot your script, just double click this error message that you're getting. And it's going to tell me where this error is. Ah, and look at this. If else, oh, I see, because I haven't actually applied this function yet. That's my bad. So now we have our function created, direction switch. Now I'm just going to highlight direction switch and replace this comment of what I wanted to do. Up here, direction switch, done deal, add my semicolon to the end to say that's the end of what I want to do there, end of statement, and put that function there. So now it's going to perform that switch every time these statements are inverted like so. So let me add the semicolon here, save my script, and now it's going to perform those two actions just by calling this one function. All right, so this is great. IntelliSense really helps us um, see what the heck's wrong with our code here. So if you just double click this, it's going to take you to where it sees an error. And this I get confused with sometimes too, if else. Really what we want to do is else if. So that's totally my fault there. But it's great because now if we save it. What's happening is it's not if else because then it's saying this is a new if statement. So it doesn't make sense. It has to see if, oh, else, if, links back to there, move direction. So that's my fault. I had that backwards. So now that we've saved our script, we've opened this back up, we should be good now. So let's go play. And now let's move our character. And now if I hit the other direction, he's rotating. That's awesome. Great stuff. And then if we go in here, we can see our forward is false. And now it's true. False, true. Always inverting. So there we have it. Our character movement is now all set up. He can move to the right, he can move to the left, and he's flipping accordingly to where he's going. So that's awesome. So in this lesson, we've learned creating your own functions. We've learned how to flip our character, invert variables, lots of random things, hey? Lots of cool little things that you can use in a lot of applications. So in the next lesson, we're going to get started on the whole jumping function and um, wrap up this character movement pretty quickly here. So great work so far, and I hope you've been able to follow along, and this is making sense. But if not, I still urge you, continue along. You're going to pick up a lot of things as you go through. And then you can go through again and code yourself, and you'll be just rocking this whole thing. So thanks again for watching, and stay tuned for the next lesson where we're going to start this character's jump. See you there.